All right, does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right, next slide, please. So water in a disaster, okay? Let me, next. So, like, I, as I was saying, I grew up in Florida, right? I grew up in Florida, but I've lived everywhere. So I've experienced all kinds of things related to, to water and why water is important in my life. Okay, besides air, which I take for granted, if air's really bad, you know, you have to race me to get to my bag so I get a mask out, okay? But, so, I, I'm assuming that I have good air, but I need water, okay? So, growing up in Florida, I had my roof taken off by hurricanes four different times. Um, at, at one point, we took uh, our bottle of water, gave it all to the neighbors, and we're drinking our pool water, okay? So, we'll, and we'll get to that in a second. So, once, years ago, the Navy, back when I was a Marine, the Navy gave me a ride somewhere I didn't really want to go. I was on an aircraft carrier off the coast of Iran, waiting to go in for the Iranian hostage rescue, and the desalinization on the carrier went down. So what that means is, is we're limited, okay, because that's where our water comes from. Now, you got a couple thousand guys on an aircraft carrier, and we don't smell all that great unless we get a shower at least once a day, right? Okay, so we're covered in hydraulic fluid. We're all hot and sweaty. And the Navy ended up saying, you get 90 seconds to take a shower once every three days. My bunk didn't smell all that great after that, you know, anyway. So, so, you know, once we got the water fixed, it, it really was a learning point for me. And, it, you know, I took water for granted. So that was the first time. The second time, you know, we had a hurricane in Florida, ended up giving away all of our bottled water to our neighbors who weren't prepared, and we ended up drinking our pool water for two weeks, which isn't the end of the world. And, and if you have the right filtration, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, it's not a problem, okay, drinking pool water. And then lastly, I, I've, I've spent a bunch of time over in the desert. And I'll tell you, you cannot drink enough water. You cannot drink too much water in the desert, okay? Uh, there, you know, there, I know there are people that believe that they can drink too much water and they'll kill themselves, okay? You can drink so much that you'll die. Anybody have any idea what that number is? Okay? There's 30 soldiers, actually 19 soldiers, 19 soldiers that were treated for being too wet, Okay? having too much water in the system over a 30-year period in the Army. And the Army makes you drink water all the time. So that's soldiers. who are They're forcing it down their throats. So don't worry about being too hydrated. It's, normally, it's never going to happen to you. You would really have to try. Okay, so water. Water is key and essential. And one of the things that I have up here is a thing called a, this is a desalinator. It's where we take salt water and we distill it, right? So we catch the steam coming off, condense the steam, and we got fresh water. Well, the beauty of that is, is the water that comes out is, is absolutely pristine. There's nothing in it, though. There's no minerals. There's no chemicals. There's nothing in it. So it's, it's like drinking distilled water. You, 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 drink, you go, to the, go to Walmart and get a jug of distilled water. Okay, you st there's minerals in the water that your body needs. Okay, So don't think that just drinking distilled water is all that great for you. But the thing with distilled water is the amount of energy that it takes to make distilled water, that's the real challenge, okay? To make a gallon of distilled water, it's going to take you probably a, a gallon or so of either gasoline or butane or propane, some, some kind of fuel. You've got, there's got to be an energy input. Okay, so next, please. And if you have any questions at any time, please ask. So uh, I was just reading this morning, checking the news. And FEMA is saying that only that half, only less than half actually, of all homes in America have three days worth of water at home. Okay, in a little bit we're going to talk about how much water should you have. But FEMA says that less than half of Americans have three days worth of water in their home in case of an emergency. Okay, I don't know how FEMA gets people's attention other than, you know, they they do public service announcements, they do lots of great things. John, who's John is our county emergency manager, and we should all say, hey, John, thank you for all your time and effort for everything you do to protect us, okay? And then the second thing is, is half of U.S. homes don't even have a first aid kit. Okay, who's got a, be honest, who's got a first aid kit at home? Okay, put your hand down. Who doesn't have one? Who doesn't have a first aid kit? Yeah, you're not going to fess up. I get it. Yeah, I'm not putting my hand up for that one. Okay. All right, so... You know, me, because I'm anal retentive, I've got one in my car, I've got one in my wife's car, i got one in my everyday carry, and got a nice big one at home, so i got several of them, because 
The first aid kits need to be where the people are. All right, so water and a disaster. You know, if you've watched the news here in the last few months, you'll see that there's all kinds of problems with water supplies in the United States. Everything from uh, the sewage systems that back up or, or FEMA in its infant wisdom trying to help us and they cause a, a mine collapse and that leads to a spill It goes into the Colorado. Yeah, okay, thanks. But the thing with, even with a boil order, right, and there's lots of boil orders like Cleveland, for example, for a, a year Cleveland had a boil order. You have to boil your water to drink it. Now, who wants to boil their water in order to drink it, okay? All right, so it's a pain in the butt. That's A, it's a difficult thing to do, and you're not going to get large quantities. But even if you boil water, all you're doing is you're killing the contaminates. Contaminants. You're killing the biologics, and we'll talk about those in a minute. You're not getting out the chemicals that are in the water, okay? All right, next please. All right, so what can cause a, 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 water, a loss of water or water pressure in any given area? You can have a break where the line breaks. You can have where the water, the, the water pipeline breaks, which is what's happened here. And then this one is just, honestly, this is the United States, believe it or not. Okay, so these, these are pipes from the 1800s, and these are essentially barrels Okay, with straps that they put over to, to minimize the leak. And once they get the leak under control, they'll backfill it, okay, until they get funding to replace that line, okay? So that's when we talk about uh, infrastructure in this country. This is a perfect example. So these are some of the reasons why we can have a loss of pressure, either a break where there's no pressure or a leak where pressure gets so low that it's not even going to get to your house and it's not going to come out of the tap. So those are two things. We can back up just a second, sorry. So those are two things that can happen. All right, and so, so these are some of the causes, right? You know, you can understand why an earthquake would break pipelines or subsidence, okay? So who's worried about subsidence living here? Are you? We should all be worried about subsidence. And I'll tell you why. Just this week, you know, my house, which is just that way, okay, just a block, uh, engineers are out there, and they're measuring. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's slipping. We need to know what direction and how fast is this going down the hill. Okay, because everything between here and the mountains, this is essentially gravel. Okay, so if you're on a slope, okay, so if you're in, they, they, when they built the house, if they didn't tie it into the ground right, yada yada. Okay, so subsidence is an issue here in town. So for us, it's an it's an it's a concern. Another one too is is fire and wildfire. All right, we you know we all know about Brian Head. Did anybody who went to the just Thursday night? Who went to the uh, uh, U.S. Forest Service the free class that they did at SUU? Come on, nobody. Okay, all right. So John, I know about it because of John and looking at. You might want to write this one down too. Is a, a thing called Eventbrite. Okay, there's a lot of public and free classes that you can go to. So they discuss wildfires in the West. And they talk about specifically about mega fires. That's a fire that blows up to over a million acres, okay? And we all know what's going on in California. Can it happen here? Okay, Tom, and Tom will tell you. Take the shades off so they can see your eyes. They know you're not lying, okay? <laughs> so when Brian Head was burning, Tom and I drove up there. And as we're going up there, we go through uh, cedar breaks, right? And we're looking at the fuel loading up there and uh, up that way, right? Don't think it's just Brian Head, any place up there. All it needs is a match, and that's gone, okay, because it's, the fuels have accumulated over the years, you know, for the last 20, 30 years. It's like it is literally a Kindle pile up there. It just takes one cigarette, one old guy out there burning weeds when he shouldn't be on a windy day, or a lightning strike, okay? Uh, but we, we should have you living here in town, okay, be, be, be aware of that as a risk. And then vandalisms. So, you know, you got teenage boys, because girls don't do this, okay? Teenage boys that, are, that break things and make lives, life hard. Next, please. Okay, so water, okay? I keep talking about why water is important. Why is it so essential? So this is the agenda that we're going to follow, okay? So the classes that I give, I do this just, the reason I give these classes is because I want to help our community be better prepared for a disaster, now, FEMA's got a thing called the all-hazards approach. So to me, 
it doesn't matter why the lights go out, right? I don't care that the substation went down or if X or Y or Z happened. What I care is the lights went out. Okay, now what am I going to do about it without the lights? So the owl hazards approach. So that's something that you guys should look at and, and understand what the risks are to you, your home, and our community. And John, okay, John Higley and our, and you can go to the, you can go to the, the county website, Iron County, go look at emergency management. They've got a lot of good resources. You should have a, an emergency management plan for you and your family, okay? Okay, so this is the agenda that we're going to follow today. If you have any questions anytime, we're going to do this in about an hour. I know I'm talking kind of fast because we got an hour. And at the end of that hour, we'll do whatever you want to do. I'll answer questions. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go this way and answer questions. Hopefully, Dennis will... Did Dennis have to go to the temple? Yeah, he's, he's already... Back. Okay. So, hopefully, Dennis, because, you know, I'll get long-winded and Dennis will get back in time. Uh, and then Dennis will be here and Michael will be here to show you all these products. And we'll talk about the good things and the bad things, and you can make your own decisions about what you have and what you don't want to have. All right, who remembers this? Who remembers? Who remembers these things? Right, right. Come on, you're you're a Gomer. You're in, okay. There's a category called Gomer, and I'm a Gomer. Okay, because I I I, I remember the Lone Ranger. Okay. All right. So, uh, and and so we had a, a civil defense, right? Civil defense. This really was an effort because of the Cold War era. If the Soviets, the Russians attacked us, these are some of the resources, okay? So that's, there's, that's what this is. And that's a barrel, of, actually, you know, it's a barrel of water. And I, in a lot of ways, I think we were more prepared as a nation then than, than we are today. All right, so why, why water is so essential? Sanitation. You can't get clean, really, without water. 80% of all infectious disease needs water as a vector. Okay, 80% of all the nasties out there need water as some kind of vector or to spread. And then we'll also, we're going to talk about the zoonoses, right? All the zoo, all the animals, all the critters that live in water, okay? And, and then contamination too, all right? All right, so uh, the handout that we gave you has got, some, has got a couple good things in it. Um, uh, the, if you want an electronic copy of this class, we're, we'll end up posting it on our website, which is uh, uh, which was is wellprepared.com. If you go out to our website, you'll, it, it'll be there. So, why is water so important? Well, okay, well, your, our brain is composed of 80% water. Mine is mostly rock, so that's not right for me. But for most people, okay. So th this is what it shows you our our composition. And then they've got a nice little chart over here. And, you know, in, in different organizations, this, this is, it varies. And what I mean by that is some, like FEMA might, it says seven gallons a day, and another, another organization might say six gallons a day. Well, that's for you to decide. Six or gallons or seven gallons, okay? But think about what your, your daily intake and use of water is, right? Through your body, right? How much you drink, that's one. Two, how much water do you use to cook with? to wash with, wash your clothes, unless you're on a carrier, then you gotta wait weeks. Uh, and then, uh, so cooking, laundry, all those kinds of things. How much water do you need, need, okay, on a daily basis? And then, bless you, how much water do you have stored? Okay, so if the power's cut off, and the means, so no power, the wells don't run. The wells don't run, there's no pressure, they can't move the water, okay? So we see the connectedness, okay. So how much water do you have in your home? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So that's a good chart. All right, so some of the properties of water. Yeah, water, yeah, it's one of my favorite things because of the physics of water. It weighs about eight, roughly eight and a half ga uh, pounds per gallon. So you're not gonna carry a lot and run with it either, right? It's one of the few things that is, exists in three states of nature at the same time on our planet. And uh, if you're religious, uh, like I am, you understand, Heavenly Father, I, I think he knows what he's doing because we need water in a liquid state. And if it wasn't for the simple fact that ice floats, there would not be life on this it planet. Doesn't make any sense when it comes to physics. It doesn't. It's, it, it, it's, the, it's an exception yep. because other things in a solid state, they're more dense, yep. right? Ice is one of the very few things that when it's in a solid state, it's larger and it floats. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. 
All right, so it, and it can uh, and, and the non-compressible. That's what, you know because it's not compressible. We ha we can we have hydraulics and all kinds of things like that. So water's a great tool for us too. Next, please. All right, this is where we you guys get to have a little bit of fun. All right, we're going to talk about some of the misinformation about water, some of the rumors that are out there. Okay, like one is is water goes bad. Okay, I got water in a jug in my garage, and after a year, I got to throw it away because it went bad. No. No, water does not go bad. Water's been around longer than I have. You know, it's been around for billions of years. Okay, so in and of itself, it doesn't go bad. But you can contaminate it, right? And there's other things you can do to it so that you don't want to consume it. But water in and of itself does not go bad. Water in those, those barrels like you got right behind you. Yeah. Uh, will that plastic leach in over the years? From the sun. The water. That, okay, that is a great question. So one of the things that we're going to talk about is the different types of plastic. Okay, and uh, the, the kinds of plastics that you want to use are, the, are they going to be the ones that say food grade. Okay, and those, the government says it has a minimal leaching effect. Okay, but any plastic, and this is a great question, you know, any plastic can leach chemicals into the into whatever's in it right well, food water right that uh, chemically it can mimic estrogen okay so guys BPAs. BPAs right so guys you're you know you're probably not as masculine as you used to be and, and anyway I know I'm making a joke but but uh, but yeah it's so that's another thing you can decide glass is a great container for water but there's a downside to that. It's light through, it's fragile. So this is where you get to make choices. And the big thing is with these is that if you store them in darker areas, you have less of a chance of it affecting it at a faster rate. If it's in the sun, it will affect it at an extremely faster rate. Plastic does absorb faster in heat. So if you can keep it in a cool area, at least 70 to 75 degrees, yep. and don't get any higher than that, you'll last a lot, lot longer of a time, and you won't have to worry about BPAs as much. All right, so these, is so to, what's your name? Chris. Chris, to Chris's point. So these things, right, where did I get this? This is a, this is a used 55-gallon drum that I got here in town that had a, it, it had a product in it that they, you mix with milk to make chocolate milk. It had different flavors. So it's had a food product in it. And you should not use, you should not use a container that's had something other than in it, anything else besides water, okay? But I have a fix for that. And then that is, is, is I'm going to filter it before I drink it, okay? So I get these because they're cheap, right? And you know, I've got a couple more over, the, over there. But my solution, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes, I treat the water when it comes out. I also, I put good water in. All right, so if you're going to store water, city water is safe. Okay, and we'll, we could talk about how how safe it is in a, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But city water safe, so you can put it into a container. And like Chris is saying, we want to keep it out of the sun. We want to keep it, you know, in, in, ideally stored in a cool, dark place. Okay, all right. So containers, and we are gonna we'll go into a little bit more detail. Running water is safe. You know, you see the, uh, you know, there's a, a program called Naked and Afraid, right? where they take these two people, they're strangers, take their clothes away, and they put them out in the middle of nowhere, and they got to survive for 21 days, okay? All right, my wife wants us to go on that show and be the first couple that goes on the show because she knows that I'll take care of her, and she's going to lay there and work on her tan. This is, this is what she says while I go do everything, okay? And, and I'm okay with that, all right? But, uh, but... On the show, they show people drinking water. You know, I'll, I'll take the chances. You know, it's running water. It's a creek. I'll drink out of that. Don't do that. Just because the water's moving, you don't know. You don't know, you know right, exactly. You don't know what's upstream. For all you know, you could go five feet, and there's a dead elk carcass that's been laying there for two weeks. Or one of my absolute favorites is birds. Birds are, you know, birds will land in the water. They'll get a drink and crap at the same time. That's what they do, okay? So, and they do it all over the place. So... Don't think that just because water's moving, it is safe. Don't do that. And we'll talk about other ways. We'll, we'll talk about ways to purify water. Eating snow. Eating snow quenches thirst. So you eat snow, it's cold. You're thirsty. You're out there in the wilds. You eat snow. It's only going to make you thirstier because the energy that it takes to bring the snow up, melt it, put it in your body, it, it's, a, it's, another, it's, another, it's another one of those things that you don't want to try to eat snow to quench your thirst. 
Salt water. Salt water, small amounts is okay. Can I drink just, if I just drink a little salt water out of the ocean today, I'll be okay. Don't do that. It really taxes your kidneys, okay? Don't drink salt water. Can I drink my own urine? Yes. Who has, who, who, uh, come on. Who's, who drank their own urine? Put your hand up. Who's, come on. Who, come on. Who's tried it? Luckily, Nobody? I haven't had to. I don't want to. Either. Okay. All right. Yeah, back years ago in seer school, in survival school, they made you drink. You, he liked his, though. <laughs> yeah, well, we were, I, yeah, we're arm wrestling for mine, yeah. So don't drink your own urine is the thing, okay? If you're, if you're that thirsty, find a different source. Don't drink your own urine because all you're going to do is you're just going to accumulate the metabolites and yada, 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 yada. Don't drink your urine. Cactus. Cactus water is safe. Another one of those things you see on those survival shows where a guy gets out his machete, cuts, it, you know, cuts the spines off the cactus, and he starts drinking the water out of it. Okay. There are some cactuses out there that will, you know, you'll either get diarrhea or you'll get, you know, you'll get, sick. you will get sick from eating it, okay? And you're just going to take more water out of your system than the cactus could possibly put in. There's only really a couple of kinds of cactus where you can get the water out of the cactus and, and get a gain. Otherwise, by putting that stuff into your system, you're losing calories, you're losing water, and not. A, and in a disaster, you don't you don't have that margin. Okay, so don't do that. Water in a natural depression is safe. Okay, you go out, you go up in the mountains. There's a nice little cup in the rock. Oh, that's probably some nice, fresh, tasty rainwater. Could be rainwater. But, you know, just three minutes ago, there was a bird there. It was drinking water, did its thing, flew away, and left you a little deposit, okay? <laughs> so just because it's in a natural depression doesn't mean it's naturally safe. Boiled water is safe. Again, we talked about that a few minutes ago. When you, boil, when you bring water to a rolling boil and you kill all the contaminants, all the, the lit stuff that's alive in it, okay, that's part of why you're treating water. Okay, you're just, there could be hazardous chemicals, there could be metals, there could be other things in that water you're not doing anything except heating them up and giving them a ride. Rationing water, okay? This is one of those things, you know, it's, if you watch a movie where these guys are in a boat, they're at sea, they're, they're, uh, they're adrift, and they go, well, we'll save the water for tomorrow. Well, drink some water today. Stay alive today so that you can, so you can drink some water tomorrow. But don't, don't ration yourself in a disaster to the point where it's life-threatening. And then last, I will die if I drink too much water. Will, can I drink so much water that it'll kill me? Okay, Because my kids will tell me, because I tell my kids all the time, drink more water. Dad, I can drink so much water, it's going to kill me. No, you have no, you have, there's no risk of that. Trust me, you'll wet yourself before that ever happens. Okay, so don't worry about drinking too much water. How much water? So how much water should I take in on a daily basis? It's, it's one of those things, too, that's, uh, that's on our handout. It's, it, based on your exertion, how much, how much you're doing, the temperature, the climate, whether you're in the sunlight or not in the sunlight, all those different factors, all those things together, that's going to determine how much you need to drink. Another way, another way to put it is thirst. If you're thirsty, drink. Okay. So, the, so we have... Uh, so, depending on the climate and the season, the individual, okay, uh, um, in sanitation, how much water do you need for sanitation? O over here on the bottom right, uh, it's so uh, different recommendations from different entities, but a minimum, a minimum, uh, well, I shouldn't say minimum, but a good rule of thumb is, on average, you should be taking in anywhere from two, qu two quarts to a gallon of water daily. That's what you, that's what you get for, for your health, right? That's what needs to go through your system. Okay, next please. One gallon per person per day. That's the absolute minimum. Next please. Sorry. So if you're going to do any cooking, cleaning, et cetera, et cetera, so now your total gets up to about seven gallons, and that's if you want to flush the toilet. And then next please. All right. So now that I know this, that I know about seven gallons per person, how many people are in my family, right? I'm going to do some real simple math. That num the number of gallons times the number of people in the family times 14 days. Okay? 14 days. 
Why 14 days? Okay, because that's what FEMA says. And it's not just FEMA. There's other entities that say that too. So does everybody have that much water stored at home? And this is the minimum, 14 days times each person in the house, right? Okay, because there's different ways to store it, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. So the different ways we can store it. Bottled, bottled water is actually a pretty good, a pretty good way to store, to store water. We'll talk about bottles in a few minutes too. But boiling water, FEMA says boiling water is a great, is a great thing to do to, to, uh, to, to clean water for your consumption. But as we know, that's not the end all be all. It might have a boil order, but that doesn't address chemicals, metal, uh, metals, et cetera, et cetera. But this is FEMA's list. If you, if, if you got to drink water, they, they say, you know, start at the top and go down. Okay. So your first choice should be bottled water. If you can't, if you don't have access to bottled water, drink boiled water. If you don't have access to boiled water, then treat water. And we're going to talk about treating. There's different kinds of treating uh, in a few minutes. And then distilled water. Uh, you know, I, it's, distilling water is just, it takes, it, the, it, it takes so much energy to go into that. You know, to, it's just not worth it. Next, please. All right. So what is the best source of water for you, for me? Tap water. This, right out of the tap. Tap water in this country is the most, one of the, the most regulated things that there is, okay? You can trust your, your tap water, unless you live in Cleveland. No, that's really a joke, Cleveland. Or you live in Flint, Michigan, okay? And we all know about Flint, Michigan and what happened there, yes? No? Real quickly, okay, Flint, Michigan, uh, because of economics, people moved out of town. The people that were left weren't paying their bills. And so the city said, okay, well now we're billions in debt. How are we, okay. So we got to get water at a cheaper alternative. He said, okay, well, nobody's looking. Tap into that and put that into our water supply. Well, the water they tapped into, it's contaminated. So everybody in Flint, Michigan drinks crap. Okay. So, but with the exception, that's Flint. But the rest of us, our water's pretty good. Tap water. So if you're going to store water in a container, all you need to do is use your tap water. Okay. Your tap water is already treated. Well water. Uh, if you have your own well, you should get it. You should get it tested three to about once every three to five years. Take a sample. You, you can get the test kit from the extension office. It's really cheap to do it. Get the extension. You get the kit. Follow the directions. Excuse me, because you want to. There's ways to collect the water without contaminating it. Mail it in. They'll send you the results, and do that every like every three to five years. But I can tell you that my well that's out here, man, it is some good water. All right. So other other sources. And then rainwater, uh, catchment, right? We all know, maybe we don't all know, but here in Utah for a number of years, catching the water off your roof, right? Your own water, rainwater, right? Off your own roof was regulated. You can only get 55 gallons of yada, yada, yada. All right, so they've lifted those limitations, okay? So if you want to catch the water coming off your roof, filter it and store it, you, sh you sure can do that. Yes, sir? Last I read the regulations, about a year ago, it was still limited to 250 gallons. It wasn't that much you could collect. It was disappointing to see how little they increased the, the amount you could collect. But in a crisis, who's going to come around and check? Right. So you you can you tell them to come to you come you tell them to come see me if they have a problem with you collecting rain rainwater off your roof, okay? But they really the state has addressed those because they've got enough pushback from several of us, and we're saying you know I mean that's just so silly. I mean you know when you think about the rooftops and you look you know how many rooftops in the state of Utah if we collected all of it all the time every time it rained and I get every drop, okay? That's six gallons, okay? All right. You know, I mean really we're that worried about it, okay? But there's Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyone? So the state's not really enforcing that. Their state is not. The state is not. So collect that water, and there's different ways to, to filter and save it. Yes, sir. If you have a composition roof. Yes. And you're collecting rainwater that washes yep. off the roof. Aren't there chemicals and leaches in that water? That's a great question. Okay. So any water that comes off your roof, you should treat as suspect. Okay. Because uh, you don't know how long has it been since the last time it rained, right? So all the dust, all the stuff that's on your roof is going gonna, is gonna to come with that water, right? So what I suggest is you save that water, and there's, really you have two different types, right? You, that, you use that water for culinary purposes, as in 
you can use it for livestock, you can use it for your garden, those kinds of things. But if you want to drink it, you filter it. So even when I store this stuff, if it comes out of here and it's about to go in me or my wife or kid's body, I filter the water. It's just, it's, it's just easy to do that. But so catch your rainwater, store it, right? And then, and then filter it if you're going to consume it. But if you're going to use it for other things, like take a bucket of it to flush the toilet, all right? Then, then you don't need to filter it. But that's a great question. All right, so speaking of that, so testing. Let's, let's talk about testing water. How do we know if I should drink it or not, okay? Well, I just talked to you about tap water. All right, so tap water in this country, the, every municipality, they've got to test their water at least twice a shift, okay? Every eight hours, all the time, constantly. Make sure that the water that we drink is safe. Okay, so tap water is, 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 is pretty good stuff, all right? So there's some other, this, this tester, it's a little electronic tester, right? I stick that down there, and the two prongs, I can measure, blah, 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 and it'll tell me, yes, it'll say, yeah, this water has stuff in it. Okay, great, that water has stuff in it. What stuff? How much stuff? Okay, so you can spend 15 bucks for one of those, and the TDS is total dissolved solids in the water. Okay, that's one thing you can do, if you want to. Up here on the top left, you can, te you can test your water for pH the pH of your water, and we'll, we, and when we're all done, if anybody wants to talk about alkaline water, which is kind of a craze right now, we can talk about that, but we're not going to about, talk about that now because that's kind of an aside, all right? So the, another thing you can do is there's lots of little test kits out there, this thing, where you can go online, you can, you can get a test kit, take your water, and see what's living in your water, what are the metals, and yada, yada. But that thing will take anywhere from a couple of days to two weeks to complete that test. Okay, because you've got to grow stuff in a Petri dish to see if anything is living in your water. Okay, so that takes a little bit of time. It's not an instant, okay? You can't go, oh, wow, there's magnesium in my water. So what do you want to test for? What standards? All right, so the EPA regulates community water, okay? All right. which is not the same thing as filters. Sorry to walk in front. All right, so the EPA does not regulate filters. Different, different organization does that. The National Science Foundation and the, uh, 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 it, anyway, so the National Science Foundation does, okay? So they're the ones that set the regulations. They're the ones that do the testing. And Dennis can tell you all about the testing, you know, that he's got to go through for, for his products. But this is, this is, actually, I have one of these. I was going to pick up two more of these today. So here's, what, here's the way you use this. You drop it down through the bung, right? And this it keeps it airtight. So I squeeze this, pressurizes the tank, and I got fresh, clean water that goes through the, the, through the filter, up and out, right? and into whatever I'm, I'm using. So I filter my water because I, you know, I don't want to test it. I don't want to take the time to test. If it takes two weeks to test the water, get the results, I'm kind of going to be thirsty for the next two weeks But you know, if, if I'm waiting to drink the water, right? So I'll just, I'll just filter the water, okay, instead of waiting for the test. So these standards, these are, what you should, these are the standards that you should look for on anybody's, uh, on anybody's uh, filters, okay? Doesn't matter who it is. And these are some other in-home systems too, but uh, so it doesn't matter who it is, okay? So the, the higher the number, the higher the standard, by the way. And the one that, there's a recent standard that came out, which is I really like, is the NSF 401, okay? I'm not gonna buy any filter, any, anything, it doesn't meet that standard, and here's why. Because, and I'll show you the mechanics in just a second. The filter material is so small, it'll get everything. That's A. And then B, is that filter is so small that it even gets pharmaceuticals out. Okay? Now, I don't know how much, you know, scientifically, you know, people putting old prescriptions, you know, I'm going to throw it away. Okay, I'll pour it in the toilet, flush the toilet, throw the bottle away. Okay, or going into the landfill, and from the landfill it gets into the water table. I don't know. You know, Scott's not an expert on pharmaceuticals in the water table going into my body and doing things to me. Okay, that's not my expertise. Okay, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to trust the government, though, that if, if I can get that, that filter to the point where I can filter all that stuff out and that's the newest and greatest standard, that's the filter that I want to buy because I don't know what the impact is. Next, please. All right, ways to treat water, okay? I was just talking about this system, right? And I like it, and these are those, the, the 55 gallon drums, like I said, are mine. I have them in here for demonstration purposes. They had other stuff in them. Uh, I, re I don't recommend you do that, okay? Buy new pristine ones, okay? That's, but if you're cheap, if you're a cheap bastard, if you ask my wife, you know, like I am, Okay, I can get these for just a couple of bucks. I can fill them full of water, and when I want the water, I just pump it out. Yeah, I was going to ask how much are they? Uh, I, I'm buying them for about ten bucks a piece. Oh. Uh, the, really the new ones, new ones, brand new. All you got to just put water in, and it's good forever. Well, those are seventy-five bucks a piece, but you get what you pay for, right? And then these things. Anybody ever go camping and use one of these? Come on, nobody. You guys don't go camping. All right, so this thing. These things are pretty cool. You t you, you're out in the wild, you get a cup of water out of the creek, you take that, you stick it in there, and you got to hold it. You don't drop it in there. You hold it, you turn the light on. It's the, it, it it's mimics the sun, essentially, okay? And so it sterilizes the water. So anything living in the water, it'll kill it. Yeah. Well, that's great. I've had that in my fish tank. The downside is, is, okay, if there's any chemicals, metals, yada, yada, it does nothing for those, okay? So... In an emergency, you know, it's, they're pretty small. It's about the size, a little bit bigger than the size of your thumb, right? Um, you know, maybe having one of those in your backpack. But again, it's not the end-all, be-all. So treating water. If we're going to treat water, we want to we want to boil it. And then uh, another another way to treat water is with, with bleach or iodine. Well, I'm sure we all know about this. We talked about distillation. And then filtering water. <laughs> Let's, next slide. Really, the thing to think about is cost per gallon, too. Okay, that's that's the bottom line. Michael. Michael. Yeah, he's back. He's busy back there. Damn guy doing his job. What's wrong with he's him? Boiling water. <laughs> you could hand me that green, this, that jug right that jug right there. This one? Yeah, that one. Yep. Oh, I can. Yeah. And, uh, thank you, sir. Here. Sorry. I was just gonna do the re uh, no. We're good. It's, thank you. This stuff. All right. So a few months ago, uh, Mark, Mark, the guy who owns this, owns uh, uh, well prepared, right? Michael's boss. This stuff. Yeah. You know, he he talked about this stuff. So I did a whole bunch of research, right? So what this stuff is, it's it's it'll do the same thing for water that bleach does, but it does it in a, in a, a much safer, non-toxic way. So I could just sit here, we could go to this. <laughs> could you, here. Thanks. Yeah, my, my boss keeping tabs on me, right? But this stuff, I would, seriously, just for demonstration purposes, I would open up and have a sip, except that it's sealed, okay? And then we'd have to, you know, I'd have to do, and I'd probably have to buy the whole jug. But, so this stuff does the same thing that uh, bleach does, but it does it in, in, a, in a lot safer way. And I'll, and I'll show you the chemistry in just a minute. Next slide. Is that liquid? This is a liquid, yep. All right. So I can either put bleach in water, right? And this is a chart from FEMA on how, how much bleach do you put in to water to make it safe to consume. So depending on whether it's 6% or 8.25%, right, because the, the, they retail either. It's just say Walmart, right, go to Walmart, get you a jug of bleach. Don't get the, don't get the bleach that's got uh, all, you know, any additives, fresheners. No, no lemon. Or... No, no, right, no lemon, lavender, no. White. Just straight, I'm sorry? White. Oh, okay, urine flavored. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you mean in the in the jug or or in once you mix it? In the jug. In the jug, I I'm gonna guess anything manufactured, it's it has a shelf life in this country. It's um it, it's 20 years in the jug. Okay, but what about when you put it in the water? Okay, when you put it in the water. Okay, so this is where the advantage comes in to using that stuff versus bleach. So chemically, here's why. If you put bleach in water, right, whether it's your swimming pool, 
If you got it in your swimming pool, the reason you got to keep putting bleach in your swimming pool is because the sun breaks it down. So you put it in either in a solid or liquid format, and what happens is the sun hits the water and, and drives that stuff into a gas, and so it evaporates out of your pool. You got to put more in. Okay. So that's why bleach. You're constantly adding bleach to your swimming pool, and if you got it stored, okay. That's why if you've got water stored once a year, you've got to go and put in more bleach on, it, on an annual basis, right? Because it's volatilized, as it's going to leave as a vapor. This, the, way, the way the molecules, okay, they stay in suspension longer, okay? So the most I would have to treat this is every two years. So that, that gives me one less thing i got to do, right? And... It's non-toxic, okay? So bleach, you, if you drink too much bleach, you can hurt yourself, kill yourself, right? Okay, that stuff, you can, it's benign is the best way to put it. Uh, and that's why I, I think it's one of the best things since sliced bread. So I've been told you don't have to treat the water until you're going to use it. That's, okay, that, that's a great question. And, and this is one of the things that Dennis, Dennis loves to talk about, and here's why. Okay, so the inside of a container like this, and the so this had food stuff in it, right? So if I add water, it can grow stuff inside the water. I mean, inside and the film on the inside, right? So that film is where the nasties grow. All right, so that's why you're putting the bleach in there to keep the nasties from growing. Okay, so if I use if I put tap water in a clean barrel that's never had anything in it, and I keep it out of the sun. That should, that should be fine, okay? But because I'm anal retentive, and uh, I'd still, I'm still going to filter the water when I take it out of there. So, um, but, uh, but the hyporedux doubles, doubles, doubles how long the, it's chemically active in the water to protect the water itself. It's, that's, so that's one. And then two, again, it's benign. It won't hurt your system at all versus bleach. Yes, sir? I heard, uh, I have a boss that's very much into emergency and like that. And he says nowadays he stores it and then you can buy these little, almost like little laundry strips or something and you drop it in uh, when you're going to open it up and need to use it. So it's, it's on a, as needed a ready to use basis. So it's not, you're not keeping Clorox in or, or the other stuff every two years, but you drop these strips in when you're ready to, and absolutely need to use the water. Yeah, yep, yeah. There's, yeah. there's strips, there's tabs, there's, there's all different ways to do that. It's just when you when when I, when you think about what this one this ga, this gallon's enough for me everybody in my neighborhood everybody in there you know everybody they know for about ten years okay one gallon once that's open it's still good yeah yeah it, yeah it's it's still good it, it, you just you know you just follow the label on there it's just a couple of drops to treat to treat you know a fifty five gallon drum yes sir the concern I have and maybe you can address this I have to read in Fox these talks. Adding bleach all the time, how much does the bleach interact with the plastic? <clears throat> That's a concern I have. Sure. And what's the chemistry of the hyporedox that it won't interact with the plastic? Yeah, the hyporedox, the, the molecule itself, it's, it doesn't interact with the plastic at all because it's a different, it's a different shape. It's, it's, you know, I, I'm not a chemist. I, I, we could, I could pull it up and we can look at the bleach molecule versus the hyporedox. It, it's... Hyporedux is a, uh, it's chemically, it's just like the bleach, it's just like bleach, it does the same thing, but it's not bleach, okay? It's, it's got an extra, it's got an extra, come on, help me out with the, the chemistry, an extra oxygen molecule, or it's got another molecule on it, but it makes it different. Um, how long has it been in test? Like in the use, and how long? That I that I couldn't tell you. Uh, I'd have to get Michael to look that up. Yes, sir. Okay. So, if I buy the filter, do I not need to mess with any of the hydro duct stuff? You know. Sure, that's a good question, right? So, if you've got it in here, you got water in here, and it's contaminated and nasty, and I got this. Do I need that too? Yeah. No, I don't need. I don't need that don't too. Need to but I have both. Okay, because I'm just that cautious gotcha. right because if i'm not there that day or you know or whatever right the wa what happens if the wife or the kids thirsty and they just oh yeah i'll just go get some of the water out of the garage and they just go help themselves i'd rather it was safe yeah. how often you have to replace the filters on that 
Okay, and that's another good question. All right, so this filter does 250 gallons, okay? Uh, or, it, three barrels. Uh, or you do a couple, of, you do 250 gallons, and then you can back flush it, right? Get all the nasties out and use it again. Um, um, uh, Dennis is working on a, uh, he's trying to get the, the 500 gallon version approved, and so that's in testing right now. And that's why I wish he was here to, to answer that one. Yep, go ahead. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the hypo, the, one of the other advantages of having the hypo redox is you can dilute it with some water in a spray bottle and you can use that as a cleaning agent? Yeah, that's a great, yeah, that's a great point too. Yeah, so this stuff, the hypo redox, right? Okay, you can use that in your kitchen at home today. Follow the directions, take a few drops, put it in water, shake the water up, spray the countertop to kill the nasties that are growing there. You don't have to use 409, you don't have to use bleach. Okay, and, and then you, if you wanted to, and I've done this just to prove a point, you lick the table and you're, you know, you're, it's not going to, uh, now the table's contaminated, got to wipe it down again. So yes, sir. It's competitive actually with like the fly saw there, any of these major disinfectants. Except that it's non-toxic, okay, to humans, okay. So it's toxic to the nasty little things, but it's not toxic to us. So filters, let's talk a little bit about filters too, all right, then this is, this is kind of key. All right. So the filters, doesn't matter whose it is. Okay, the filter material that's in size is varying pore size, right? So depending on how, how small the pore is, so, and this is where you got to read the fine print on filters, right? Well, not, you know, not just these, whatever scale it is, okay? Whoever makes it, you know, doesn't matter who makes it, right? What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that the filter material, okay, there's, a, there's an absolute, right, which means that all the filter material inside is, is X size or smaller, right? Okay, that's called the, you know, absolute, like, this is absolute one micron, right? Versus this, this filter, it averages one micron. So I can have five, 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 one, 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 five, 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 okay? So that makes a huge difference, and it's always in the fine print, okay? This is what you want, okay? Not average, not average filter size, no, okay? Absolute, okay? All right, next, please. And less than one micron is ideal? Yes, sir, yep. Go, go back up one, I'm sorry. I, should have, I should point this out to you, too. All right, so the R filter, the, the, okay? So that 99.99999% of bacteria. Okay, why not 100%? Because the government, even if it filters out every single bacteria and there's nothing, right, they still won't let you put 100%, okay? That's, that's our government, okay. All right, so bacteria, you know, they're pretty big. You got virus, Giardia, and, you know, Giardia, right? Giardia is their assist. They got like a hard outer shell, right? And so that's and so it occurs out in the wild. You drink that water when it gets into your system. That shell, that outer shell, breaks down, and that's how you get contaminated from Giardia. Okay, next please. That one's the one in testing because it said 550 gallons. Uh, that one's the one in testing. I'm assuming that filtration system. The, the bigger one? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yep. That one said 550 gallons. That one's 250. Right, right. This is 250, and the other one's 550. Right. He's. He's got he's he's got that being at the lab being verified. So if you if you have at home at home if you've got a concern about water coming out of the tap and you want a filter, this is the one, okay? And the reason I say that, we don't sell them. I'm not trying to not doing any marketing for these guys, but this thing is the highest rated filter and it meets the NSF 401 standard, okay? That means, you know, it gets Everything out. The only thing coming out is water, right? Even even the medications. So does that also take the minerals out that you want? That takes out everything, yeah. Right. So you end up almost, so you end up almost it, same as distilled water. Right, right. It, but but some people want pure water. And and, and it is, if you're if you're that concerned about what comes out of your tap, that's the highest rated that is the highest rated filter. <coughs> All right. So we're going to talk about filtration, microfiltration. So we're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller with the filters. Next, please. Okay, so microfiltration takes out a lot of the big stuff, does nothing for the chemicals or anything else. Now we get down to ultra filtration, 
which is 0 0.01 microns, right? A lot smaller hole. Okay, you can see it's effective, very effective against protozoa, bacteria, moderate against viruses, and then really doesn't do much for chemicals. Next. So that's the next pore size down, right? Okay. Now we're going to go down another, an, another layer. And uh, so the nanofilters, 0 0.01 microns, very, uh, uh, very effective in, uh, in all the biologics, and then moderate in removing chemicals. Okay. And then next, reverse osmosis. And, you know, whatever people talk about, you know, osmosis is just water flowing from one place to another, higher pressure to a lower pressure. So reverse osmosis is the opposite. Well, I'm applying pressure to make it go through a filter. Okay, so reverse osmosis. Okay, and then sometimes uh, metals. All right, next. This is what I'm trying to get to. It is oh yeah, not n not distillation. Okay, so this is an example of in the third world. This is some, a distillation pot. All right, I'm boiling water and co collecting clean water here. I take this swamp water, put it in here, it boils, and I collect it into my jug. So you can see the effort that it takes. And it's easy, it's easy to contaminate your distillation system, too, with your nasty little fingers. Well, at least mine are nasty little fingers. Then we have the ultraviolet. Ultraviolet, that's that system, you know, where essentially is, we're mimicking the sun. We're using light to kill all the nasty little biologics in water. But it does nothing for the chemicals. So we talked about that a minute ago. Next. All right, so... Go back one, would you? All right, next. Uh, all right, so what do I have, okay? How much water do you, should you have? Let's, let me back up to that. How much water should you have? We talked about that, right? Seven gallons per person for 14 days is a minimum. That's what you should have stored. Now, what, how should you have that stored? Me, personally, I've got, I, I overkill it, okay? So I got, I got these drums in the garage. Okay, and can you, Tom, can you grab one of those? Yeah, that, throw me one. Oh, oops, sorry. Darn it. Oh, yeah, okay. So these things, I, I, I know it's, we do carry this. The reason we carry this, as you can see, they're impact resistant. The color of the plastic is a barrier to sunlight. You can put a 550 cord and you can make a handle and carry this, okay? It has three seals, okay? It's got an outer seal, it's got an inner seal, and it's got the cap, okay? There's a lot of water containers that once you take the cap off, you drink some, it's it. You don't drink it all, you're done. But you can put the cap back on. These are freeze, these, these, these survive freezing, okay? So I, I like them and that's why we carry them. So I have some of these at home and I have other methods too, because I don't put all my eggs in any one basket, right? And it, we'll we'll talk about that. So here's eggs in basket. You look, that's the kid's bed, right? The daughter's bed. You got these things under the bed, okay? That's her bed. How many do I have? I got two weeks worth for her under her bed, okay? Why this size? Okay, because all right, I don't want to throw it to Chris. We'll give it to John. John, you, you, you know, you can manhandle that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys that are like me, me and John, they're a little bit older. This has got two handles, okay, so I can, and Dennis designed these this way. Okay, so I can carry it this way, and if you're an old gomer like me, one of this full, it's a little bit heavier, so I got two handles to jockey it around. The lid, when you pour water, it doesn't do that glug, glug, where it splashes water everywhere, okay? He engineered those well. They stack. You can see, got them under the kid's bed, okay? So that's the kid's room. Normally, the bedspread is so hanging over the water. That's just a plastic container. That is just a plastic container, yes. But it also mates up with the, uh, the treatment system, too, uh, the, the, uh, the filtration system, okay. And there's other companies out there, like, you know, these, these anybody ever in the military, the five-gallon water cans that we have, we hate them, okay? You, you, they leak. Uh, you try to get water out of it, they, you, you always put more water on your feet than you get in the container. They're just a pain in the ass, okay? So there's a company called Scepter that has a, that has a valve. Now, we're going we're gonna to order some. We're going to test some. Um, but but that's, that's if you use the five-gallon water jugs, okay? Next, please. 
All right, so I, I, I talked about these, the, the little, uh, the Purify, the little container, right? And here's why I like a 20 year shelf life. Again, that's the maximum shelf life of anything made in America. All right, the three seals, impact resistant, blocks light. Yeah, I, I talked about all those. Next, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, yeah, back up. I do want to talk about water bobs, okay? Now, the LDS Church says, hey, water bobs are a good thing. Everybody should have, everybody should have, everybody should have a water bob. Okay, that's great. You should have a water bob. Here's the thing. Here's my, my position on a water bob. It's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's thin plastic, right? You put it in a bathtub. If you know you're not going to have water, right, you, have, you can put one of these in, in your bathtub, fill it full of water, so you've got about 200 gallons of water in your bathtub, right? Okay, here's my thing. If I know I'm not going to have water, and I know there's a catastrophe coming, I'm not staying in the house where this bathtub is. I'm going to go somewhere safer, right? And if I got time to sit around and fill this thing with, fill this bladder with water, there's other things that I would rather be doing, okay? But if you don't have any other way to, to store water, it's a real economical thing to do. But understand, too, though, that this plastic is pretty thin. It gets, you can poke a hole in it real easily but you can get them for like 15 bucks okay so that's you can you can have 200 gallons of water stored in your bathtub but that means you know that i'm about to have a water outage so you know in advance to fill it because otherwise i'm taking a shower every day and i don't have one of those in my bathtub next please so water bob is just a big plastic bag it is yeah it's a big plastic sleeve in your bathtub know what that was. Okay. Yeah, yeah all right so what do i have Next, okay, I do a layered approach. Like if you walk up to my house, I got the fence, I got the guard dog, you're in laser range, you've got the landmines, you've got my 12 year old with her rifle that just can't wait for you to, okay. All right, so that whole layered approach. So I got some of these always handy, next. And I got a whole bunch of these, you know, I got just regular bottled water in the garage. And then I've got, I've got some of these too, right? I've got some of the water bricks. And this is for you to determine, you know, how much, where do I put it? Depends on, do you want to put it in your closet? Uh, you know, these I just have out in the garage. My garage stays warm enough that it doesn't ever freeze, so I'm not worried about it. But if, if freezing is a concern, you, yes, ma'am? Well, I just think about the water bricks. So they seal really well. You don't worry about leakage. I mean, if I'm keeping it under a bed, I hate to come in and come and throw it they do yeah they they seal pretty well well enough that i trust them to put it under my kid's bed um and and like i said too they're portable so and, and one the one there's one more and then so i have a i have all these as part of my solution and then i have out of my i got a bug out location where i've got a whole bunch of 55 gallon drums with liners and they're full of water it says five thousand only because I don't know all of you. If I knew you, I would tell you I really have 20,000. But don't think that I'm going to share all that. Okay. But. Google map of the. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll be emailing this to you. Okay. We're going to go for a walk in the woods and go fishing. Okay. Janet, can I take him fishing? I'm coming back by myself. All right. So the plastics. This is in the, this is in the slide deck. Okay. So if you go to the website, pull it down, you can see the plastic bike types. And you know what's 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 good or bad about each of the different plastics? Were there limitations? Okay, so you can see, all right, green means that they're approved for their food grade, approved for water storage. But I can tell you, all of them, okay, 95 percent. I don't know which ones don't. All right, are estrogenic, and that's that whole thing where you know the chemically it mimics estrogen, and I don't know what it's doing to me, you to you, doing to kid. And then when you think about how many water bottles go into the landfill, it's just disgusting, right? So because I'm so cheap, I do. My water bottles, I recycle them until I break it, and then I get more water bottles. I don't use it and throw it away. Though there are literally, if you, knew the, if you knew the math, I'll tell you the math. In this country alone, we use so many water bottles, okay, that we could fuel a million cars for a year, every year, just on Water bottles on the, you know, the fuel, I mean, the, pet the petroleum products that go into making water bottles, okay? So that, that's my... There's literally plastic islands in the ocean. Yeah, out in the Pacific, yep. Yeah. All right, so if you've got to bug out from your house, this is why I have different bottle, different 
I have water in different packages, if you will. So if I have to leave home and go somewhere, I want it portable to a degree. The downside of these things is if they fall over, they will crack. Okay, uh, These things, they always leak, and even though I've got some, I, I ate them. Anybody who's ever in the military hates them. Yes, I got lots of these, but that's, you know, that's one quart. I would love to have my own water truck, <laughs> especially when it's from River City, right? Is that, that's next to Flint, though. Oh, never mind. I don't want that water. And then, then this guy, if he's going to move water, what's wrong with this load? Well, he's, there's, these are half full. Anybody ever seen a milk truck go down the side of the road before they put baffles in a milk truck where a guy went around the corner and rolled the whole truck over? Yes, sir. For those who have been in the military or who have access to canteens, that one you have up there isn't worth a damn. The water tastes like crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're going to try a canteen yeah. system, see if you can't find the old ones that were made out of aluminum, or better, the ones that they used to have for the officers that were made out of stainless steel, because there's no bad taste. But those one, those canteens you have there, the water is. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. These, these taste these. Anything you put in it, the water comes out, tastes pretty foul. This isn't nearly as bad, but you can still taste it. The uh, the aluminum ones are okay. Uh, if you can find the stainless steel canteens, get as many as you can because they don't make them anymore, and you know, and they're they're expensive. And water water in it, it, it don't don't put chocolate milk in it this week, and then next week put water in it. Okay, just put water in a canteen. Okay. And then, so they, yeah, they do make containers of all, all different types. That, to me, that's about worthless, you know, because, you know, when I moved out here, goat heads, you guys know what goat heads are, right? No? All right. Where I come from, we call them sand spurs, right? It's a little, it's a, essentially, it's a seed with stuff on it that pokes you, okay? Mini caltrops, there you go. So, uh, yeah, so they're all over the place out here. So, you know, that's all it takes to put a hole in one of those. So, some, some link... Link, some links and resources that will be in the electronic copy that will be on our website. So if you want to go look at other things, uh, these are some real good resources, FEMA and some other entities, on water, uh, testing, yada, 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 all kinds of good stuff. And then we did give you guys a handout. Yes, ma'am. I've got boxed colloidal water. You have boxed colloidal, colloidal water? Uh, oh, Culligan. Culligan water. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It is, yeah. So there's, there's a couple of different um, uh, pr products out there that use a cardboard outer shell to protect a, an aluminized plastic or plastic uh, container inside. You can fill it full of water, right? But they don't tolerate uh, uh, freezing very well. And, um, and, and if you get the, the carton, the, plastic, the, uh, the cardboard wet, then you know, it's, it's just going to dissolve on you. That's those are okay, but it, you're not going to want to move them. You know, they just don't tolerate a lot of a lot of abuse. So here, so back to what I was saying about having water in different different forms. Okay, so I've got water in these things that you know that that if I have to get out of the house with the three minute notice, right? I have water with me in my 72 hour kit. So enough for me and the family for 72 hours wherever we go. All right, and then if I have a one hour notice. Well, then I'm going to transfer. I can do this pretty easily. The daughter's going to do a lot of the work. <laughs> Carrying these from her, under her bed, for example, and we're putting them into the pickup or putting them into the, our, our, the trailer, a camper, right? And then, you know, I'm assuming I'm going to leave these that are filled behind, right? If I have to leave home, you know, I, I, you know they're just not that readily. It's just not that easy to move them. Weighs about 500 pounds full, right? So that's why I have some in a different location. So that's my thought process. All right, next slide. All right, you, so you got a handout if you want to refer to that, see if you guys have any questions. One more, please. And I'm sorry, I was wrong. One more. All right. You want to just click a couple. So the formal portion is done. Me talking and flapping my gums and bothering you is over. Okay, I don't know what our next class here is going to be. But here's, a, here's what we have been doing. 
We've been giving free classes. Again, you know, I have a I have a master's degree in security management. Been there, done that, got all the t-shirts, okay? All the bad places on the planet. I've I've been there. Been the cause of some bad things, okay? But 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 what I want to do is take my experiences and help our community, help the city, help the county. So the event of a disaster, we're ready. Okay? So one of the bullets that was in here, I didn't I didn't talk about it, but half of America believes that in the event of a disaster, the authorities are going to come in riding the, the cavalry. They're going to come riding in and save them. Okay, look at New Orleans. You all, everybody saw that in the news. Where, well, I just stayed home. I was wait, I was waiting for the boat to show up, you know, and get my rocker, help me get my cooler, you know, and then and then I'd go. I was waiting for them to come save me. Well, look at Puerto Rico. Look at Puerto Rico. Exactly. Yeah, right. And, and and there's a lot of people still whining about Puerto Rico. Okay, the only person that's responsible for my safety in my life is me. So I'll start with me, okay? So I want to help our community. So if there's, what I'm trying to get to is if there's a topic you would like us to talk about, okay, uh, uh, present on, please let Michael know and, and, uh, and we'll get it on our schedule. And uh, we're, we're willing to come, and come to your home or sit down with you here in the, here in the store and do an individual risk assessment. Okay, this is me, this is where I live, this is my zip code. What do I need to worry about? Crime, earthquakes, yada, yada, yada. So we'll help you that. We'll do, we will help you develop a plan to be prepared as you want to be. All right? Yes, ma'am, you had a question. Um, the blue barrels, when you get used ones, how do you clean them to make sure that they are? Okay, so that is a great question. How do I clean them? I take them to the car wash, and I use the high pressure, right? And I clean them as much as I can. And then I rinse them out, and then I set them out, let them dry for a couple of days, and then I put some more water in it and some uh, baking soda, and then let them sit, you know, sit for a few more days, and I rinse them out another time, and then I fill them. How much baking soda do you use for soapy water? I do. I use the soapy water to, yeah, this is a power wash to get everything off the inside and dump that out and then rinse it a couple of times. But that's, that's my technique. And then when you put baking soda in, yep. A, 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 like two cups, two two cups, and that's just to neutralize anything that's in there. And try to get the odor out too. Okay. There was two more questions. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Um, we picked up some of those uh, buckets, white buckets at Lowe's a place. Oh, Western Family Foods. Yeah, and they've had something like gallon butter or something like that in them, and we took it to the car wash and it took quite quite a bit of spraying. Five gallon but, buckets. Yeah. Yep. For those, and they have the, the lids you can kind of pound on with the mallet and right. And yep. Up. Uh, for water, I don't know if that. Well, whether we're going to store weed or other things in that, but uh, how much would you would you want to go through the picking soda process and all of that in order before you would put water in those five gallon buckets? You know, I, I would try to wash them out as much as I could, right? And then fill them. And if you're not going to move them, you're just going to store them. The thing with those is those white ones that they let a lot of sunlight through. So you're probably going to end up growing algae on the inside. Even if it's in a dark Unless you got it in your basement where there's no light that can get to it. And even then, you got a blanket thrown over it. But then when you take that water out of the bucket, I would, I would, I would still filter it if, if I'm drinking it, you know? If I'm using it for other things, I'll just take it right out of the bucket, right? If I'm going to cook with it because I'm going to bring it to a boil first, then that's what I would do. Or you are using it for non-culinary. Yeah, the only advantage to those is they're just free for new <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, pickle buckets, yeah, recycling pickle buckets, yep. Yes, sir. I missed your name at the beginning. Okay. My name is Scott Thomas. And again, you know, please, this, think of this, think of well, the reason Mark went into business here to do this is really is to help the community. You know, we support John every, in every way that we can. Um, you know, it's, we believe, here, here's, here's, here's my philosophy. So if something happens in my neighborhood, I'm going to help Chris, Chris is going to help me. And that's so that their first responders, right, the guy in the fire truck, the, the officer, the police officer, they can go do real emergency stuff and go deal with that because they don't, they don't need to come over there and help me get the cat out of the tree. Okay? All right. Yes, sir. Well, a real emergency, too. Those first responders and stuff have their families get their first priority sometimes, too, so they're not going to get there as fast as, you know. You, 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 okay. All right. So you would be surprised, okay? You know, firefighters in California, their own homes burned while they were up in the hills fighting fires, okay? And their family's at risk because when they take that oath, whether it's law enforcement or fire, okay, those guys, and that's why it takes a special human being, guys and gals, to do that. 
Okay, you cannot thank law enforcement and fire enough. Okay, having been a soldier and been shot and shot at, this it's way different. Okay, For, you know, me going to the sound of a gun is a lot different than seeing this house on fire. And I go into the house that's on fire just to see if there's anybody inside, maybe that needs to come out. Okay, it takes a special kind of courage to be a to be a, a to be a police officer or a firefighter. Okay, and and uh, yeah, they're going to assume that we as good neighbors are taking care of their families so they can go take care of us as a community. Okay, all right.